I'm updating some of my older videos, and in this video I want to make pain de mie. It's a French bread, but it's not like those rounded baguettes that we see often here in the USA. And you don't use a standard loaf pan that's open on top so that the bread rises up and gives you that rounded muffin top. You use something called a Pullman pan. This is a Pullman pan. It's got a lid on it, like that. The idea being that you keep the bread, the dough, in an enclosed space. It can rise and square up, but it's not going to go any further than that. And what you end up with is a condensed, denser loaf. So the bread is ideal for making sandwiches. Some people call pan de mie their go-to loaf for sandwiches. My favorite use for pan de mie during springtime is I will take slices, dip them in egg, fry them to make French toast, and then put strawberries on top, whipped cream. That to me is better than strawberry shortcake. I love doing that during the spring. But you can make croutes with it. There's a lot of uses for pan de mie. So let's make pan de mie. One of the challenges in trying to come up with a recipe here is size of Pullman pan. Mine is 16 inches long, which is just over 40 centimeters. But I've seen some that are 12 inches, 13 inches, 14 inches. I'm gonna give you the formula flour to liquid that works best in my pan, but if you're using a smaller pan, you obviously need to adjust this recipe down a little bit for the size of pan you're using. Between my two bowls here, I have five cups, 25 ounces, 700 grams roughly of bread flour. I put half of the flour in my bowl already. I'll add the rest of that later. What I have here is one tablespoon of active dry yeast and one tablespoon of sugar. I'll mix that in. And then what I have here is two cups or 475 milliliters of milk that I've warmed up to about 110, 115 degrees maximum, which is about 45 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna put that in there to make my batter here. This is called a sponge, I believe get this mixed together and then I can move this bowl to my stand mixer. I moved my bowl to my stand mixer but I need to say you could do all this by hand. You could knead it all by hand. Bread has been made for centuries by hand. This is a fairly new invention. I also want to mention that if you're not sure about your yeast, maybe it's close to the expiration date, you don't know whether it's still active, alive or not, put it in the bowl with the sugar and the liquid and let it sit for five to ten minutes. If it gets foamy it's good. I put the remainder of my flour in this plastic container because it makes it easier to add this to my bowl as it's turning. And then I'm going to put my salt in there. I have two teaspoons of salt here. What I have in my bowl now is a dough ball. I'm going to cut an opening in this. And what I have here is four tablespoons of butter. And this is at room temperature. I'm going to put one of these, I've cut it into four pieces. I'm going to put that into the dough ball and then I'm going to work this in. And as it works in, the dough is going to break up, but you continue to work it, continue to knead it, and it'll come back together again. My dough ball is starting to come back together again, so I'm going to work in another piece of my butter here. And you keep doing this until all the butter is incorporated and the dough ball is smooth. Let's talk about something else when it comes to making bread. The formula of dry ingredients to wet ingredients isn't perfect for all occasions. You could be in a very moist climate, a lot of humidity, or a very dry climate. You could be using winter wheat as opposed to summer wheat. The amount of moisture in the flour can change. The amount of water that's in that butter, all of that can affect the moisture of the dough. So look at the dough, and if it seems like it's too dry, add a little bit of water, maybe a tablespoon at a time. If it seems too wet, too sticky, add a little bit of flour. What I like to see is I want the dough to stick a little bit to the bottom of the bowl, but I want to see it pulling away from the side. That's what I've got right now, so I'm going to put my machine back on and I'm going to knead this for about eight minutes. Okay, my kneading is done now. And again, you can do all this by hand if you want. I'm using my KitchenAid because when I do things by hand, people comment, you got a KitchenAid, why don't you use it? 
And then when I do it with a machine, they say, not everybody has a KitchenAid. Show us how to do it by hand. You can do it either way. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna clean out this bowl because I'm gonna use it for the rising. So I cleaned out my bowl here. I'm gonna put a plastic bag on my hand. Got some butter here on the side. I'm gonna butter this bowl well. All the way up the sides. Okay, that's good for a start. And then, oh, I love the feel of this dough. It's nice, it's moist, a little bit sticky. That's exactly where it should be. That's what I like. I'm also going to just pat the top of that with butter. Some people turn the dough over in the bowl to grease it all the way around. I just pat the top with butter. And now what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I'm going to let this rise for however long it takes for that dough to come up to the top of my bowl. I wanna see it rising up over the rim. It could be an hour, two hours. My kitchen is fairly warm now, it's about 75, 76 degrees, so I think this will rise fairly well. So this now has been rising for an hour and a half. It's just coming up to the top of the bowl. It's only gonna rise so high because it'll collapse under its own weight. I'm gonna collapse that down like that. Take this out of the bowl. And then I'm gonna shape this into a loaf to go into my Pullman pan. I really like the feel of this. I'm gonna dust that with some flour so it doesn't stick so much. Just lightly dust it with some flour. Nice, perfect, look at that, beautiful. Nice loaf. And then I lined my pan with parchment paper. I'm going to put this in there. You can just grease the pan. I like to use parchment paper. Okay. And I'm going to press it into the bottom like that. I'm going to cover this with plastic and let this rise again. I want to let this rise until it just comes up to maybe a half an inch or so below the rim of the pan. My dough now is just about coming up near the top. I would say that's within a half an inch. Put this paper over the top. Just makes it easier to get the bread out afterwards. Then I'm going to put my lid on and I'm going to let this sit for 10 more minutes to rise. In the meantime I'm heating my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius. And when it comes up to temperature and after this has risen for 10 minutes, I'm going to put this in the oven for the first baking 25 minutes. Okay, so here they are. Here's the loaf rather out of the oven. Look how easily that slides off. Beautiful. All right. And then I'm going to just kind of peel this back like so. Nice golden color. Now I'm going to return this to the oven for another 10 minutes. So here is my pan de mie out of the oven after being in there for another 10 minutes. I like to cook by temperature when I can. And for bread, I want to see an internal temperature of close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 93 degrees Celsius, and I'm right about there. So I'm going to lift this out. Get this pan out of the way. And then that is hot. And there it is. That is pandemi. You can see how it has that square shape to it. I'm going to let that cool thoroughly, and then I can slice it. And I'm thinking of toasting some of this, just having it with, toasted with some butter. 
my bread has cooled now. I'm ready to cut into this and see what the crumb looks like on the inside. Very tender, I can tell already. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice crumb. But you can see not big bubbles. So this is not like a loaf of bread you might buy at the grocery store. This is a nice dense bread. I'm going to cut a couple of nice slices of this and then put them in the toaster and see how my bread tastes. So there it is. I've toasted a couple of slices. Yeah. I mean, what could be better than homemade bread? And what I'm thinking is, I have some genuine maple syrup up in the cupboard. And maybe for breakfast tomorrow morning, I'll make some French toast and have it with genuine maple syrup. But right now, I'm going to go enjoy my afternoon snack of pain de mie. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.